Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Evangelist at Autodesk, and today I want to talk to you about a couple of tips and tricks in regards to working with CAM for Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is cloud libraries and how do we access that. Number one, very top right, under your name, drop down, go to preferences. Within here, under the general tab, you're going to come down to CAM, and here you'll see enable cloud libraries. Go ahead and check that on for me. Don't say okay. Let's talk about this a little bit. What does this mean? What does this do? What this does is it takes any custom tools, any custom libraries you create, saves it to the cloud. You can access it from a Mac OS system, a Windows platform, anywhere you want to go. Well, how do we even create these custom libraries? Well, let's let's talk about that too. Under the Manage tab, come down to Tool Library, and what you'll see here is a now a folder called Cloud. Now, if I open that up, I've actually created my own custom libraries here. So how do we even import ones that we maybe created and want to leverage from HSM Works or even Inventor HSM? Well, to do this, very top, you're going to see Import Tool Library. Click on that. And what you're going to do is, is you're going to search for .hsm lib. What that is is the extension of that, that file that holds all the tools if you've exported it from Inventor or even HSM works. Now once you find the one you want, all you have to do is just upload it and it comes right in here. You can even create your own custom tools, tool libraries, so you can actually hover over here and what you're gonna see on this avenue now is you can now save this file off. That's, that's number one. So I can save any ones that I've created in here, save them off and then send them over to somebody else, which is nice. So a lot more flexibility there. Even create into creating my own custom um, my own custom tools, my own custom holders. So a lot more flexibility here of exactly. And, and the nice thing, I, if you notice too, in this release for the Mac, what you'll see here is you know, the, the preview, giving you a nice preview of exactly what how a tapered mill might look like. And if I click on that, I can now go through and keen all the specific corner radius, diameters, and everything along that way. So some great improvements to the tool library in itself. But where does all this connect together and where does all this stay? Well, let's talk about that now. Is that if I actually come over to my data panel, open that guy up, and if I access A360 right, right here in the little triangle, click on that guy, what you'll see now is now, now I'm accessing that, that project that I'm working in. But if I actually click on the dashboard, click on that guy, and then what you're going to now go to is the data tab. Okay, this is really key because this not only shows you all your data like your CAD files, but this also gives you access to three other files, folders that are new. One called CAM Posts, one called Templates, CAM Templates, and one called CAM Tools. This is where everything is stored. So I can even create my own custom posts, my own custom templates, and just upload everything directly to A360. So this is the backbone behind what's going on with Fusion. And you can see here, this is now our new file extension for Fusion 360, .json, JSON, right? So this is nice to where everything is stored. You can save these off and anywhere you go, this is where it's looking at behind the scenes. And you can always, these are always saved locally too. I just wanna point this out, really big in regards to working with cloud libraries for CAM for Fusion 360. Let's actually now jump into Fusion 360 and talk about some, some cool things. Right, number one is, is uh, you know, everybody starts with like a face mail, and that's always the first thing you do when you get a piece of stock. One thing I like, if you're not aware, is if I actually edit this, this face operation that I have, uh, what's standard is that, you know, it just comes in, faces that part, comes around, and you can look at the climb conventional, all that good stuff. But one thing we've added under passes, we have something called use chip thinning. And what chip thinning does, it actually rolls the face mill in to give you a lot finer chips when you're when you're trying to face that face off the part. So something new we've added. Um, two from adaptive learning, right? So once I face it, I can you know use our two D uh, not, not even two D adaptive, but really three D adaptive strategies here. And under adaptive clearing, if I right click on that, edit it. Two things I want to point out is under the Passes tab, we've always had Order Depth, right? So if I hover over Order Depth, 
check that guy on. If you don't know, if you hover over, it gives you a nice little preview. Shows a specific order from the top down of what, what to machine. But we've also added order by area, which is actually nice too. So taking over that technology from HSM Works as well as Inventor HSM and bringing it over to Fusion, Camp for Fusion 360. Other piece too was under the linking tab. This is actually really, really cool. It's, that it's called the stay down level. What this does is saying that, you know, depending on the on your re, your retrack speed, right, for your machine. Some might be slower than, than other machines. And the nice thing here is that you can change that stay down level percentage, the least amount to the most amount. Um, and that will calculate things for you too. So some really cool things with adaptive clearing, 3D strategies. The next piece I want to talk to you about is 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 drilling, right? And and and, and the the thing that we always kind of you know think about, and we're like, man, we always forget when we're modeling. Man, what's the size of that hole that I'm that I'm working with there? And I want to want to talk about this, which is actually really slick. Is that now if I hover over a hole that I want to machine or drill, you see it will tell me the diameters. This is a 0.3 inch. Um, you know diameter and I can come right in under tool what you'll see here now is I can just you know of course I can always do a filter filter out for 0.3 find it finds that specific one just say okay and then now the nice piece here is under you know geometry really just picking you know what I wanna what I wanna drill as well as I can do you know select same size diameter depending on what you want but then two, what's, what we've also added is under the cycle type, if you drop down, you can come down now to breakthrough. That's new as well. So just something to kind of point out there. But I, I really like how you can hover over now a, a hole and know exactly the, the diameter and go pick that correct tool. So some, something to, to try out or keep in mind. Some other things too which I like, speaking of, of libraries, is you know if, if I go ahead and edit, let's say, um, this this adaptive clearing strategy and under the tool library what you'll see now is we've kind of spruced it up a little bit under tool type you'll see that we've kind of added a little bit more uh, sex appeal as you want to call it so where you have little icons that really show you know this is what a face mail looks like a tapered mail just just some really in-depth stuff even get into to, to some of the details here right of little pictures for each one but then two of you noticed Look at my custom tool libraries. Right here I have the Autodesk A1 that I showed you earlier. I even have a lot of the sample ones here that I've had. So, so now we've cleaned things up. Of course this is the preview of, uh, of our vision of where we're going with our tool libraries here. So definitely kind of you know get used to it. Um, this is specifically the Mac OS system. The Windows platform is still the same that will eventually transfer over and the releases to come down the road. So always keep out, keep engaged in our forums and you'll hear a lot what, what's going on there too. So what else can I talk to you guys about? Well, let's talk about um, templates. And I think this is actually really key because you know what a lot of people tend to do, I'm just gonna kind of zoom out here and we'll take a look at this other, um, this other part that I have. The, actually the other side, this, this uh, actually is part of a, a supercar. So if you guys ever heard of the BAC Mono, it's the next supercar that's out. And this is one of their parts off their cars. And I just, you know, mess around machining it. But what I want to show you is that we can actually take strategies, right? Let's say I've set, you know, order by depth or order by area or just, you know, I've set a couple different strategies, you know, step overs and all that kind of good stuff, right? And I don't always want to, I always want to save that off and maybe apply it to another part. What we can do is, is work with templates. And to do that, if I actually select, let's say, both of these strategies, because what I did is I did, uh, first I did 3D adaptive clearing, right? So just to kind of show you guys really quick, 3D adaptive clearing. Then I came in and I did rest machining, right? So came first started with a bigger tool, came in here with a smaller tool to rough everything out. But, you know, I set all these specific parameters. And if I click both of them, right click, we now can say store as template. So I can call this, you know, cam, you know, V3, whatever I want it to be. And then I'll take take those tools, take those the strategy, take any type of stuck over changes I've done, and then come over here to my additional setup, right click, come down to create from template, come on over here and now apply that to this new setup. So all I want to have to do really is just edit and say, well, you know, what I really want to edit here is that the geometry specifically, okay, great, have that all set up. 
And then two, what else I want to change now for rest machining, now come in and edit that specifically, maybe edit the geometry selection. So maybe I want to come around and now select you know, this, this outside edge, for example, depending on what I want to do in this example. But that's kind of the nice piece here, is I have that flexibility to take strategies, take all that hard work I might have set up for like an adaptive strategy, a parallel, a contour, and then from there now take those, those, those changes and apply it to a, new, to a new setup, which is actually really slick. And then of course, post, post-processing. Um, one thing I think you guys would, uh, would, would really like is now leveraging the cloud is if I come over here to go and select a, a setup, come over here to post process. Now we have not only our generic posts that you guys are all familiar with, but then two, what we have is we have your personal posts. So if you are working with a machine that you don't see listed on here, you can now load your posts to the cloud, A36 as I showed you earlier, access all those posts right off the bat or even your cloud posts. So maybe you were somewhere else working with a customer, working with a, a vendor or whatnot, got that post dialed in, uploaded to A360. You can all access all that stuff here now. So now truly leveraging the cloud. And then lastly, we will end now with cam.autodesk.com. If you guys are working with working with um, some of our partners out there. And on our website, cam.autodesk.com, we've now added not only a customer success story page, but a partners page as well for industrial CNC to shop maker CNC. And you'll see number one, other mail, and you can go download their posts right there. Even two, scrolling on down, who's coming out uh, soon is Pocket NC. Please check them out, really cool stuff. They are doing a, a five axis uh, desktop CNC machine. So really interesting. It's like you open up a little briefcase and boom, there is your five axis uh, five axis machine and you can download it there as well if it's not if you don't already have it. So hopefully this stuff helped you guys out. Uh, feel free to uh, email us, get involved in the forms as well as if you like the video, click the like button at the very bottom and leave some comments as well. Thanks again guys.